Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video we're going to be going over how to figure out what the rate law and rate law constant is for a particular reaction based on some tabulated data from experiments. And this is uh, what's going to be helpful for uh, solving this problem is the idea of a pseudo uh, constant, pseudo rate law constant. So let's get into this. Okay, so in this problem, we have the rate of a reaction, A plus B, gives us products, and it is investigated, and the results of two separate experiments are shown below, right here in these tables that I'll go over in a moment. Uh, the data has been plotted in Excel. I'll show you those Excel plots a little bit later. Please note that in each experiment, the concentration of A remains significantly, significantly higher than the concentration of B for the duration of the run. Determine the rate law and the rate law constant K for this reaction. Include the units on the K. Okay, so let's talk about the data here. So we got two experiments. Notice that experiment number one, the concentration of A is 0 0.80 molar. And in experiment two, the concentration of A is uh, half of that. 0.40 molar. So the concentration of A in this experiment is half of what it is in this experiment, or another way is that the concentration of A in this experiment is double the amount of concentration of A in this experiment. So that's going to be important later. Now, notice that in both experiments, the concentration of A is much greater than the concentration of B here. So the concentrations of B are on the order of magnitude of 100 times, about 100 times smaller, right? So this is 2.00 times 10 to the negative 3, right? So here we have an order of times 10 to the negative 1. So all of these are, are much smaller concentrations in, in B than of A. And that's going to be important because... That allows us to uh, determine that the rate law constant that we will be solving for initially is going to be a pseudo rate law constant or the, the rate law constant that we're given in the graphs, which I'll show you in a moment, um, is actually going to be a pseudo rate law. And so what is, what is a pseudo rate law or rate law constant? So the, what that means is that uh, specifically under the circumstances where your concentration of one substance uh, is much, much greater than the concentration of another substance that uh, affects the rate of the reaction. So if we have a rate of reaction like this, so we have A and B, so our rate law is going to look like something like this. Right, so rate is equal to some constant, rate constant K multiplied by the concentration of A, right, raised to some power X, and then multiplied by the concentration of B multiplied by, uh, raised to some power Y. And so part of what we need to do is figure out what X and Y is and what K is. And so some of this is going to be, uh, the, the graphs are going to help us solve some of this uh, as well. So, but the thing is, um, what this allows us to do, so when we uh, run our reaction under these conditions with the concentration of A being so high, we can effectively assume that A is held constant. So... Although A is reacting during the concentration, this concentration is going to change slightly, very slightly compared to the concentration of B changing. So effectively, uh, the concentration of A ends up being constant, and that can be absorbed into the K value. So when we do K, right, so what happens is then, then the rate, the rate law looks something like this. So A, because the concentration is so high, doesn't really change. It becomes a constant. And so this becomes absorbed into the K value and then becomes a pseudo rate law constant 
multiplied by b to the y, right? So then when we do our, our data, right, when we plot our data, we get a straight line. We're going to plot this in terms of concentration of b, and then our slope of the line is going to be the k value, but this is this pseudo k value, not our actual k value. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out because this is going to be useful later for figuring out what our actual K value is. Okay, so I hope I've laid the, the foundation there. Um, so let's, let's get into figuring out what the orders the, of the A and B are. So since we got data for this, let's look at the data. Now, the thing I want to point out is when you're looking at experiments, and you're trying to figure out what the order of the reaction is in with respect to a certain reactant, um, the, the key is you are going to be plotting that data according to the integrated rate laws, right? Um, or not, I shouldn't say integrated rate laws, but um, you're gonna be plotting that according to the uh, values you need to get uh, certain orders. What do I mean by that? So for a zero order rate law, uh, you need you need to plot the uh, the concentration with respect to time and see if the data lines up in a linear grade if the dots of the of the uh, the data points. Um, are linear, right? So if you do a best fit line, if the best fit line is linear and the, and the, and the, and the points, the data points line up on that line, then you know that it must be zero order. For first order, you need to plot the data uh, with respect to the natural log of the concentration uh, versus time and see if that lines up on a uh, linear, linear uh, graph. And then if it's a uh, second order, then you're going to plot the data with respect to the one over the concentration of the reactant with respect to time and see if that matches up on a straight line or it gives you a linear graph. And so let me just kind of give you the data here. So here are the graphs. Let me, oops, it's upside down. So here are the graphs that you're given in this problem. And so you're, what we're looking for is in both experiments, uh, which one has the data points lining up uh, in a linear fashion. So you'll see that in each of the six graphs. So you know, up here we have, this is uh, experiment one graphs. And so this is uh, one over the concentration with respect to time. This is the natural log of the concentration with respect to time. And then this is the uh, concentration with respect to time. So if it was uh, linear here, then we would say, oh, that's, it must be zero order, right? And if it was linear here, it would be first order. And if it's linear here, it would be second order. Um, and so we could see right away, look here. So notice the data points don't really line up on the best fit line here. And then same here for this one. So this indicates that it's not going to be for, it's not going to be zero order. And then this is first order. And then notice here for the second order, right? Notice that the points pretty much line up right on the line. And then we could see that also for the second experiment down here. So if we see that in the second experiment, excuse me, sorry. Um, you can see down here, oops, uh, this is going to be the experiment here. Here, let me, it was better the other way. So here, this one over here again is the experiment for the second experiment. So this is again, let me get that closer. This one here is again, um, that's zero order. So this is with respect to the concentration versus time. And then this one here is the natural log of the concentration with respect to time. So that's going to be first order. And again, over here, it's the, uh, the one over the concentration with respect to time. And then you can see that right here, it's again linear. 
So this is going to be the linear one here. Uh, so that means, again, according to the second experiment, it's second order. So that means it's second order with respect to uh, the concentration of B, because that's the concentration that we're changing. We're changing the concentration of B over time, and we're seeing that the data points for both experiments are fitting a linear curve or a linear uh, progression uh, when it's plotted for the second order uh, rate law. So let's, so that tells us that for our rate law here, where's my, uh, I'll just use green. So then our rate law becomes this, the rate, so here's what we have. So the rate equals K times the concentration of A to some power x, and then multiplied by b raised to the second power because, again, it's second order with respect to b because that's what gives us a linear, uh, linear graph, okay? So, well, what about a? How do we figure out a? Now, there's a, a couple ways to do this um, according to uh, the graph. We could look at the graph, look at the equation, and we can determine from the slope. So let me go ahead and show you a couple of different ways that you can figure out what the, uh, what the order with respect to A is. Okay, let's look at our graphs again. So since uh, we know that the graph, oops, uh, yes. So since we know that the uh, graphs or the experiment for uh, the concentration of B gives us a second order with respect to the concentration of B. So we're going to be looking at these graphs here. And what you'll notice, move to this side. What you'll notice over here is right, right over here for this graph here. I dropped my marker. Okay, so sorry about this. So here, this is the graph right here. This is what we're looking at here. So this uh, graph here, you can see that this equation gives us the equation of a line. Excel is great, and it gives us the e equation of the uh, line here. And it's 1 over the concentration of B equals, then you got this number here multiplied by time plus some uh, some uh, number here. This is the y-intercept. And what you'll notice is that this fits the integrated rate law uh, equation for second order. And that means that the slope of the line is our k. And you notice that the slope is 11.671 multiplied by time. Okay, so that is our slope for the first, uh, the first reaction, the first experiment. Then we have to go to the second experiment, and you'll notice the this, this, uh, same thing here. So the second experiment, you'll see, oops, sorry. There we go. So the second experiment here, you'll see that there's the equation of the line. And again, right there, so you see the equation of the line. Sorry. Um, so there's the equation of the line. Give me a moment. Right there. Sorry. So here, you've got the equation of the line, and you'll see that, again, you have the slope. It's 1 over b equals, and then this time the slope is 2.9563 times time plus, again, the, uh, the uh, y-intercept. And so what we, what we want to focus on is that slope. 
So over here, so over here, the slope for experiment two is 2.9563, where if we go back to experiment one, we see that the slope here is 11 point, oops, can't get my finger there, 11.671. Uh, so those are the slopes of the two graphs that we're interested in. So we can figure out what the difference is in the slope because that's our, that's our pseudo rate law constant. Our pseudo rate law constant is the slope. And so what we can do is see what happens to the slope when we change the concentration of A. So if we go from experiment two to experiment uh, one, we double the concentration of A. Well, what happens to the slope the, or the pseudo rate law slope um, or the constant when we double the amount of, uh, of A, right? So if we write down the, the, um, the slopes here, so for experiment two, right? So experiment two here uh, is 2.9563, that's the slope. And so if we take this, so here, if we take say the concentration of A, so we take the concentration of A, for the experiment one that was and so that's experiment one and we divide that by the concentration of b oh no sorry the concentration of a for experiment two and so the concentration changes well what's going to happen to the, the difference in the K values, right? So we see here that um, the concentration of one is 0 0.8, zero molar. The concentration of, these, of A in the second experiment is 0 0.40 molar. That's gonna give us double so that the factor, it differs by a factor of two. So the concentration from two to one increases by a factor of two. Well, what happens to the, the constant? So we look at the constant for um, experiment one. So the, for experiment one, the rate law constant was 11.671. So if we take that, we take uh, the pseudo rate law constant or the slope, right? So if we take the slope here, and that number in the slope, uh, so we have this slope, let's write this down. So just to be clear, so the slope of experiment one over the slope of experiment two, that's gonna be equal to the uh, rate law constant or pseudo rate law constant of experiment one over the pseudo rate law constant of experiment two. And then if we, again, look those up, we put that in. So experiment one was 11.671. So we have 11.671 divided by, um, for experiment two, it was 2.9563, 2.5963. And if we calculate this, we get about four times. We get equal to 3.947. Oops, let me write that down here. We get uh, 3.947. 3.947. So notice that as the, this means that as we double the concentration of A, 
we quadruple the, the rate constant, right? So that indicates a squared function, right? So the rate law or the rate constant um, changes by a square, a factor square, based on the change in the concentration of A, which again indicates that we have a, a rate law or an order uh, of, of, how should I say, uh, that the rate law is, a, is a, an order of two with respect to the concentration of A. So that's one way you could do it. Um, another way you could do it, um, and I'll leave that, is to uh, set up the equation for the, uh, co uh, the set up the equation for the ratio of the k values with respect to uh, the pseudo, I should say, the, um, uh, the definition of our pseudo rate law, right? So, for example, um, what I mean to say is we know that uh, k, the pseudo k for experiment one, is going to be equal to the actual k value for that experiment, or the, the k value, uh, multiplied by the concentration of A raised to some power x. Right? So remember, what I said earlier is that since A is, the concentration of A is so much greater that it gets absorbed into with the k value. So now we have this pseudo k value. So what we're now is we're using that to help us solve for the order with respect to A. So, and we know also that the pseudo rate law constant for experiment two is going to be equal to K multiplied by, again, A raised to some power, right? So this should be the same for both of these uh, experiments. So now all we have to do is just write this as a, as a ratio. So we just write this as a ratio. And so now we have the pseudo rate constant of, of experiment one over the pseudo rate constant of experiment two equal to now, the k values, these, uh, this rate law constant is going to be the same for both, so that cancels out. And so now we have the ratio of the concentration of A raised to the x power over, and this is, again, I should write down, this is from experiment one, and this is experiment two. And so then this is from experiment one, and then we have the concentration from experiment two raised to the x power. And now we just need to find x. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to use our, uh, our laws of logs, right? So we're gonna have to take the log of both sides and we're gonna have to uh, manipulate the equation to get x uh, out of the power space or place. So what we're gonna do is then we're going to take the log of both sides, so we're going to take the log of the pseudo rate law constant 1 over the pseudo rate law or rate law constant 2 is going to be equal to the log of these. So again, this is going to be the log of the concentration of x. Now one thing I want to uh, uh, kind of talk about a little bit is since both of these have uh, the power of x, then this can be written as just the fraction of a, the concentration of a over the concentration of uh, a1 over the concentration of a2 all raised in parentheses to the, to the power of x. Since they're both to the power of x, then you can just kind of put these in parentheses and they're both be the power of x. So then what happens is we have the concentration of A, oops. Sorry about that. So we'll have the concentration of A 
uh, of the first experiment over the concentration of A in the second experiment, all raised to the X power. And if you remember from your logs, uh, if you have a log of something raised to the power, then what you can do is one of the rules or is that you can take the X, the, the exponent here, and move it as multiplied by the log. So I can take this and just have it multiplied by the log. So then what I can do is, let me, let me go ahead and erase this since we don't need this anymore. So then I'm going to just continue up here. So now I'm going to have the log of pseudo k1 over pseudo k2 equals, and then this x is going to come down here. So now I'm going to have x multiplied by the log of this, right? So now I'm going to put it up here. So this is going to be uh, the constant. So this is going to be the concentration of A for experiment one over the concentration of A for experiment two. And so now all I have to do is divide both sides by this. So then I divide both sides by the log of the concentration of A for experiment one over the concentration of A for experiment two. Divide that on this side, log of the concentration of A for experiment one over the concentration of A for experiment two. And so now I have X is equal to this, right? So I just, this will cancel out. And now I have uh, X is equal to the log of pseudo K1 over pseudo K2 divided by the log of, sorry if my handwriting is not good, the log of concentration of A for experiment one over the concentration of A for experiment two. So now all I have to do is just plug the information in. So again, this is going to be K1 from experiment one. That was from the, the slope, right? So these are going to be the slopes of the two lines. And this is the concentrations that we have here, 0 0.40 and 0 0.80. So we just plug that in. And so we end up with, we'll have the log of, and then this is going to be K1 again is going to be 11.671. So 11.671 over 2. Point, 2.9563 and that's going to be divided by the log of A1 over A2. A1 is 0 0.80 0 0.80 molar and then experiment 2 is 0 0.40 molar and so we just plug this in to our calculator and we get 1.981 so x is equal to 1.981 which is very close to 2 so again we got double, we got a second order with respect to A from this process as well. So you could either use the slopes of the graphs and see how the slope of the graphs forms, or you could use this method here where you use the ratio of the pseudo uh, uh, rate law constants with respect to their definitions, right? So that's a couple of ways. So now we know that here, Y 
is 2. And now we know that x here is 2 as well. Now, now we just need to find what this value here is for the rate law constant. And we need to find the, uh, the units as well because they're asking us to include the units for k. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this so we can go to the next part. Okay, so what do we do? How do we find k? So we're going to have to use our definition of the rate law, uh, pseudo rate law constant, right? So we know that uh, the k1, the pseudo rate law of experiment one, or the pseudo rate law constant of experiment one is equal to the constant k multiplied by the concentration of A raised to the second power, right? And so this is for um, experiment one, so we'll put a one there as well. And then now what we could do to solve for K, we can plug in the values. So now the pseudo rate law constant here, this comes from our experiment from the from the experiment from the slope and the slope of k is the uh, is one over the molarity uh, and the time right so so k pseudo k I'll write it down here so the units for the pseudo rate law constant that's going to be uh, one over molar and time in this case it's minutes so one over minutes uh one over molar time or another way to put this is also uh oops molar to the negative one power so molar to negative one times minutes to the negative one so that's another way to put it so those are the units of k here so when we put in the slope, right, for this, again, it's 11.671. So it's going to be 11.671 uh, per molar uh, per minute. Because remember, the, uh, the data was graphed uh, and plotted with respect to time in minutes, right? So we have minutes here. Um, so then we have, that's our k value, our, our pseudo k value. That's going to be equal to k multiplied by the concentration of a squared for experiment one. And that's going to be uh, 0 0.80 molar. So we just put in 0 0.80 molar and that's going to be squared. And then we just solve for k. So k is going to be equal to 11.671 uh, per molar and then per minute divided by this concentration squared. So it's going to be uh, 0 0.80 molar squared. And then, so if we calculate this, uh, notice that we have molar squared on the bottom. So that's going to be molar to the negative two if we bring it to the top, right? So when we calculate this, we're going to end up having uh, molar to the negative three. So let's calculate this. We get 18.2. So here we get K is equal to 18.2. And again, it's going to be molar to the negative three uh, times minutes to the negative one. Okay, 
So notice that because I am multiplying and dividing, uh, the number of sig figs should be equal to or the same as the least number of sig figs. Here I have two. So I should have two here, uh, but I'm keeping an extra digit for rounding because I have to do this again. So this is experiment one. We're going to have to do that for experiment two and then take the average. So again, uh, when we're doing this, we're going to do for K uh, for the second. So I'll do it over here. So I have K uh, two, the pseudo rate constant two is equal to K again, multiplied by the concentration of A for the second experiment squared. So now the rate law constant comes from the slope of, sec of the second experiment. So again, that's going to be 2.9563. So here we have uh, 2.9563. And again, the units for that slope is going to be uh, per molar times per minute, which is going to be negative 1. That's going to be equal to K times the concentration of A. So the concentration of A for the second experiment, experiment two is 0 0.4. So we're going to multiply this by 0 0.40 molar, and that's going to be squared. And again, we just divide both sides. So this is going to be divided by 0 0.40 molar squared, divide this by 0 0.40 molar squared. And then you can see that K, the second, for the second reaction, is going to be equal to these two divided by each other. So again, this is going to be 2.9563 per molar per minute divided by 0 0.40 molar squared. And again, you can see that we're going to have, we're dividing by molarity squared. Here we're already dividing by molarity. That's what the negative one means. So we're going to have uh, the same units as we did before, molar to the negative three power. So if we calculate this, we get 18.47. So here we get 18.4. We'll just round it to 4, I guess. 18.4, uh, and that's, again, molar to the third, negative 3 times minute to the negative 1. So now all I have to do is take these two and then get the average. So I add these two together and divide by two. And when I do that, I get, I get 18.3. So average these together, I get 18.3 molar to the negative three power times minutes to the negative one power. But again, um, it should be two sig figs. So since this is uh, a third one, I can drop that one and I just keep it at 18. So then this would be the final answer for my uh, K value. Now to keep in mind here, now we can just add this to our rate law here. So let me go ahead and erase this, since we don't need this anymore, and we don't need this. So now I have the rate is equal to K, which is 18 per molar times minutes. And then this is going to be um, a1 or A multiplied by A squared multiplied by B squared. Okay. And then with these units, you can like, since molarity, right, we know that molarity 
is equal to mole over liters. So this is molarity to the negative three. So the way we can write this, just to kind of clarify the units here, we can have rate is equal to 18. Instead of molar negative three, we could have 18 over Eighteen over molar to the third times minutes, right? So is there a positive here on the bottom, negative on top, right? And then it would be this would be multiplied by a squared times b squared, and since we know that molarity is moles over liters, we can kind of clarify that and say, okay, well, then rate is equal to 18 over, and this would be moles per liter to the third power multiplied by minutes. And then you'd have, again, if I, I could put it over here, multiplied by a to the second power, multiplied by b to the second power. And then I can, I can make it a little bit more. Since this is on the bottom, right, um, you can flip it, take the reciprocal, and put it on top, right? You could take moles over liters here, and then just flip it, put it on top, and it'll be moles cubed over liters cubed. And so you could put it in that form as well. So the rate is equal to 18 times liters cubed over uh, moles cubed times minutes. That would be your K value multiplied by the concentration of A squared times the concentration of B squared. So um, how you keep it, what units you keep it in, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go through that in case um, your answer doesn't quite look like my answer, it just might be determined on how, how the units are presented. And that's how you do this problem. I know this took a, a little while, but it was worth it because it was good to explain everything and make clear everything. And I hope it helped you. And if it did, then please, by all means, like the video, share the video, hit that like button over here somewhere. Also, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And also, hit that notifica notification bell up there. When you do, click all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this video or any videos or my channel. And let me know if you have a problem that you would like me to solve. Um, if you have an issue or a problem or want me to cover a certain topic, let me know and I'll try to do that for you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.